No dead center spots. He's he's staying. Look at that. He's staying over on the side of the bike. He's not going back. As everyone knows, I am a dedicated fast boy. I love going on track. I do a little bit of club racing. I've got an Endurance Ninja 400 and a 675R that's prepped for sprint racing. I love carving up corners, hitting apexes, and going fast on track. And it turns out that many of you do as well. So I actually had a few videos from my Discord server of fellow track day warriors and bros and girls as well, and we're gonna take a look at them and do a little bit of a review. Now, I do wanna say I am not a professional motorcycle road racer, as it is probably obvious enough. Absolutely. However, I do have quite a bit of experience, and so today I'm gonna be reacting and reviewing some track day footage. Today's video is proudly supported by Ridge Wallets. We'll tell you more about them later in the show. Let's get started with our first video. So our first video comes to us from user Daxa. She actually has a Ninja 400 and she just did her first track day at Sepang in Malaysia, which what a freaking flex to go to Sepang and do a track day. I would kill to ride that track. Let's watch and let's react. Looks like a quick shifter on that bike. <laughs> yep, that's what happens when the 400 bikes fly by. Really good on the brakes there. Trying to watch the lever, trailing it in on the throttle nicely there. Taking a conservative line, we're a little far away from the curb. Could have flicked that over a little bit quicker, but I'm not super familiar with Sepang. I don't know the layout that well. Could have grabbed a gear up there a little bit. But we're passing a Street Fighter V4, V2 maybe? Maybe an instructor let her by a little bit, I'm not sure. I'm loving the braking zones. We're hard on the brakes, keeping the revs up. We're back on the gas, right at the apex. That is really nice for a first time track day rider. Grabbing a gear up confidently. Could have laid that over probably in another gear, probably kept bearing it onto a little bit. It is a 400, you gotta carve those tighter lines. We're wavering a little bit here. I think we were a little unsure of what line we were supposed to take through there. Little bit, could have carried that out a little bit more. See, we have all this straightaway to play with. You could have gone all the way out right there. We're on the brakes again, very nice. Coming back in, missed that apex a teensy bit, but not a big deal. We're still on the gas. Looking in harder. Full gas right there, grab a gear up. There we go. Dude, for a first timer, this is really impressive. Could have been a little more outside right here. Use all that track. Tipped it in a little bit later, carved that one. Takes us out over there. Cause see, we're coming up on the right-hander here and we're staying inside. Now we're drifting out out a little bit. Now we gotta go back on the right over here. So again, I'm not super familiar with the layout of Sepang, so maybe this is the correct line. I've never ridden that track. Seen it a lot in MotoGP though. But Daxit, really good job here. For a first time track day rider, I'm really impressed with how you're doing. You've got a very natural ability to get passed by a Motard, that's awesome. Got a natural ability to grab, the little awkward on the downshifts there, but a natural ability to stay on the gas, commit to the brakes, grabbing gears down really nice. We're on another straightaway here. This is not the main straight. On the front straight, rather. So Pang's kind of funny. It kind of has two straightaways. We're in the middle of the track position here, doing okay. What I want to see is, are we going to get set up before corner? Let's see here. On the brakes, on the brakes and then we're switching over. Okay, so that's a big one. You want to already be positioned before you tip it in. So Daxa there waited until she completed her braking and then scooched her butt over. You should already have your butt over. That's going to make the process a lot easier. But really, really impressive lap here for a first timer out at Sepang. That was pretty impressive from Daxa. All right, guys, so this next one is actually one of my buddies from my local track, Two Wheeled Capo. Uh, this is him at Eagles Canyon Raceway, a track I am extremely familiar with because it's my home track. He's doing a 209 around here, which is a pretty, pretty fast lap, not too bad. Let's see how he gets on. All right, we're coming on to the final set of corners here before the front straight. We're getting over on the butt of the seat a little late there, a little off the apex there. Could have picked up throttle a little bit sooner there. Looked like we were a little bit ginger, but that's okay. 
He's on stock gearing here, and I can tell because we only got into about fourth gear there. Really heavy on the brakes. You saw the bike have a little bit of movement there, but good right here. Grab an apex, flick it over on the left here. Should be full gas right there. I think he is grabbing third gear. Got that slipper chattering away. No mercy given. Good line selection through there. Also there, should be a little bit more gas right through there. Capo, I know you can do it, I know you can do it. He's chasing a, a 205 or a 206 here. But good lines through here, nice and clean. There's a little bit of a bump right there, so you have to manage when you get that exit. And then here, you can stay on it and flick it over. Just gotta set the geometry a little bit with a little bit of break, and then you can guide it through. Flick it over here to the left for Eagles Canyon. You got a really tight corner here, you got to drop two gears, he did that pretty effectively. Definitely got to carve a tighter line through there, you can easily find one to two seconds just in this section alone. Carve a tighter line through there and commit to the gas more, gets you way better drive for this final part of the track, which is the back straight. So we're cruising here on the back straight, grabbing third gear, fourth gear, can we get fifth, can we get fifth, we cut right there into fourth. Heavy on the brakes there, tip it in left. There's a quick right-hander there, so you actually have to stay to the left a little bit more than you'd think. You shouldn't carry it all the way outside there. Gives you plenty of room to grab a gear up through there. Gonna flick it left over here, but good job with the body position, setting it up before you take the corner, Capo. I like to see that. That's a big thing that kind of intermediate and beginner guys get wrong, which you are not doing, is kind of putting the body as you're about to tip it in. So we'll check it again here. He's back to center, you can see in his body position, but he shouldn't be. He should be leaned over in his butt, and so he's, he's a little late here, see? He, he got his butt over a little bit late. But a respectable time around this racetrack, man. I really think that you can easily get in the 205 or 204s if you just clean up a couple things here and there, easily. That was great to see. Let's check out our next one. Guys, I wanted to take a second to shout out the sponsor of today's video, Ridge Wallets. Now, you guys have probably seen me promoting these guys before and that is for good reason. We've worked with them for many years and I've owned a Ridge Wallet for almost four years now. But the coolest thing is Ridge has been around for almost 10 years and they are doing an awesome anniversary sale over on their website where you can save up to 40% on all their great stuff. Head over to ridge.com slash yammy noob to save up to 40% on their anniversary sale. They got over 50,000 five-star reviews across their minimal wallets and that is for good reason. They really are the real deal. So head over to ridge.com slash yammy noob and save up to 40% off. Now back to the show. All right, folks, here we have just a butt cam of user Matthew on an SV650 at CMP. Now, I'm not familiar with CMP, so let's take a look and see if we can spot anything that we can uh, identify as Matthew doing good or bad. All right, flick it in there. Nice line, got that apex nice and clean. Quick transitions, I like that. Hard on the gas, got the body really nice there. No dead center spots, he's, he's staying, look at that, he's staying over on the side of the bike. He's not going back to center, because he's already prepped for that one. Hitting into the left, that's really nice. If you listen close, good throttle control, really good throttle control. You can hear how he's waiting, he's patient, he's waiting, he's trying to see the moment he can, right there, crack it back open. Keeping the body in the correct position. He's not going back to center. Matthew, that is awesome, dude. Really good job. That's great. We're getting passed by a couple R6s. That's okay. We're on an SV650 Twins Cup bike. No problem. Could be a little bit more aggressive, I think, with the tip in there. But no need to massively flick it over. Just a little bit more assertive in getting that bike on the side of the tire but I'm loving how Matthew is not going back to center here. That is really nice. I think we clipped the curb there a little bit. Looking controlled, looking like you've got everything dialed in there. That bike's looking nice and settled. The braking seems to be really nice and smooth and linear. We're not mashing on the brakes. We're pulling and controlling into our uh, trail braking zones here. A little aggressive through there, a little aggressive. Looked like he was really trying to find some time, just stuck it in there. But I'm liking what I'm seeing, confident, confident. 
already have the body over for the next one. This is a really good riding, guys. Um, really, really good riding from Matthew on the SV650. Let's check out our final reaction video. So here we have user Regarify, tough to say, but I think I got it, on a DRZ400 at a Supermoto car track with SoCal Supermoto. Let's take a look. All right. Looks like we were grabbing gears a little bit early there. I know the DRD doesn't rev much, but we could have grabbed a little bit earlier. We got the foot out style. Look at that. Doing the Supermoto style thing. Now, again, this is a car track, so it's really tight and narrow. It's really uh, hard to say, oh, you got to be faster, more on the gas, because car tracks are really small. And I've actually never ridden on a car track before. I've only ever done big bike days. So I would love to come hit up a car track. I think it'd be super fun. I think we're grabbing a few too many gears through there. I think we could hold those gears a little bit longer and just stay on the power a little bit more. Flick it in a little bit quicker through there. I think this is, oh, going on the dirt now. That's right, Supermoto School sometimes do a little bit of dirt. Are we gonna have a little bit of a jump? I think so, let's see. Small one right there. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a ton of fun. Real mixed conditions, real funky. Got a nice little jump right here. <laughs> Gotta make sure you scrub that dirt off real nice and clean. Flick it over side to side, try to clean everything off. Because going from dirt to asphalt can be pretty, pretty tricky. I really think we're grabbing a few too many gears there and kind of awkwardly grabbing gears. I think we could stay in it a little bit and, and mine that open throttle, close throttle connection. We don't want to just be chopping, right? We want to open, close, open, close. Kind of that seesaw effect, you know, as you break, you add lean angle. As you accelerate, you take it away. Just just like that. But. Pretty nice in control here. Looks like we're having a ton of fun with the foot out style. Everything looking really clean. Really nice and controlled, and that's what I like to see. This is probably a demonstration bike that they have at the school. I can tell by the graphics, actually. So, probably taking it pretty easy on the DRZ. And to be fair, a Supermoto School DRZ is probably completely busted up. That bike's probably beat to death. <laughs> But I'm loving what I'm seeing here, man. It looks like you're having a ton of fun learning the edges of grip and traction here. We got a KTM trying to pass us. Looks like he went for the pass there. Back it in a little bit, flexing on him. <laughs> got the foot out over there. Whoever passed him there was really just doing it to goon around with him. And that's, that's, that's the fun of supermotos and car tracks. You got to hand it to him. That looks great. I gotta go out and try one of these kart days, man. I've only ever done big bike track days, motocross, that sort of thing. Never done the supermoto kart thing, and I think I'd definitely fall in love with it. But those were some pretty awesome onboards. But guys, I hope you enjoyed today's little track day review. If you like this kind of content, let me know down below. I'd love to review your track day footage. If you got something cool, link me down below in the comments or join on our Discord server and chat with me and link to me directly. It's a much easier way of getting a hold of me. Uh, but thanks so much for checking everything out, guys. I really do appreciate it. We'll catch you in the next one. And thanks so much for Ridge Wallets for the sponsor on today's video. We'll see you later. Brother, I was just like you once before. I remember I was a squid. I was doing terrible things on the street, but then I found Yammy Noob and I kept watching Yammy Noob and that made me feel better. And when I got better, I stopped doing terrible things on my H2 back here. So I implore you, keep watching Yammy Noob. Click subscribe, watch the next video.